and welcome to the second BTT viewer Skype interview here on Beyond the Trailer. And today I'm happy to welcome uh, BTT viewer Asa, all the way from Sweden, correct? That is correct. So uh, we're going to start a new format that's going to be used for these interviews going forward, and that is going to be our wish lists for big movies that are coming up. And so you and I today both have five things we want to see in the upcoming Batman Superman movie hitting theaters in 2015. But to just kind of get an idea, uh, so so the viewers here can get an idea of your tastes as a moviegoer, can you just talk a little bit about how you feel about Nolan's films and Man of Steel and basically how the DC movies are doing uh, compared to Marvel and such? Well, uh, for me, the Nolan movies were a revelation. Uh, Batman, of course, changed everything. It, the first Batman Begin movie was uh, one of the best movies I've ever seen, and it has really affected, of course, everything. But I also think that all the Nolan, the Nolan trilogy stands alone. It is a very special kind of superhero movie that will not really work for other characters and to build a, a sort of DC universe in the way that Marvel has built their Marvel universe. I felt like the second The Dark Knight movie was possibly even better than Batman Begins. And I was a bit disappointed in the third one because it, I think it felt too much like mm -hmm. uh, I, I lost Batman in that movie. It was very much focused on Bruce Wayne uh, to me. And you know, he was trying to be a little bit too clever with sort of always surprising you. Who is the villain? Oh, you thought it was Bane, but it's really uh, Tali Al Ghul. Well, I also think he was robbed a little bit there because, uh, you know, we saw all the set photos of Marion Cotillard in costume. So yeah. maybe that would have been a great reveal. But unfortunately, yeah. we, we knew, yeah. we knew. And I was kind of looking forward to Bane as a villain. Bane is a fantastic villain, and so I felt like I was a bit robbed of Bane uh, as a villain. But So, of course, the Nolan movies, they're fantastic. Uh, they stand alone. But the problem I see, with, of course, is for DC to move on beyond that and to try to build their own universe. And... Man of Steel. I mean, I can see. I can see there is a beginning there. There, there are some interesting things. It's a better start than perhaps the previous Superman uh, movie was. But uh, still, I, I felt like they are they are holding on too much to Nolan in a certain way, um, mm. and I can understand that because it was so great. But I think they need to move in a different direction to really make something fresh for us to look at. So yeah. we're both going to share our, our top five things that we want to see happen in the movie. Uh, so what's your number one? My number one thing is what I don't want to see actually, and that is I don't want to see Frank Miller's uh, Dark Knight Returns. Because that, that is the classic, sort of, not the classic, but you know, the, the big Superman and Batman story. But that was in the future when they had really a history together. And it, I think it would be easy to sort of steal that fantastic storyline a bit, but you have to earn it. It, it kind of felt like that with Star Trek 2. They try to rush into the Khan story. You it's really have to have some patience and, and earn that kind. So don't steal. So what I don't want to see is Frank Miller's uh, The Dark Knight Returns uh, storyline. Well, that's really a great point. I mean, this is a big debate that you might be seeing yourself in the BTT comments and participating in, in that, do you have to do homework to see a movie? You know, some viewers feel, well, go read the material. You know, you come in knowing what's going on. You know who Khan is. But I feel that a movie needs to stand on its own. Uh, and yeah. I felt that way about Star Trek Into Darkness, and I agree with you. And this is going to be a new Batman. So no matter what we might know about Batman, we don't know about Ben Affleck as Batman. So I agree. No. I think that's a great point. So my number one is I feel that this is Lex Luthor's moment. I think this is his chance to really uh. come into the open and shine and finally be the serious character that comic book readers like ourselves mm. know he can be. That would be great. Right? I still feel the best example of him was on Batman the Animated Series, uh, on Superman the Animated Series. I think that they, they did a great job with him there. And I really want, you know, I did a casting video on this and I think Brian Cranston would obviously be wonderful. But just as long as they get a mm. serious older actor, to really bring some gravity to it. And I also think because I think in Man of Steel, Superman, in my opinion, made a lot of mistakes and he, you know, he risked a lot of lives uh, and he really damaged Metropolis. I think that for the first yeah. time also, I think we can maybe see where Lex Luthor is coming from. He's not going to seem like a zealot mm -hmm. and that'll put him in a gray area, which I think will be fascinating. So what's your number two? Well, number two is uh, less brooding. Uh, 
we've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of movies where the heroes are conflicted. Oh, do I really want this power? Do I really want to do this? Uh, what what is all going to lead up to? And one of the things that I think many people really liked about several of the Marvel movies is that we move beyond that, and it's like, wow, I have these fantastic powers, and it's amazing. And what I think the thing that I did always liked about, about Superman is the joy he takes in. I mean, he can see the whole world. He loves the world because he can see it and experience it in such a fantastic way. So, okay, we've had the brooding. Uh, we've had a very much brooding Batman in uh, in Dark Knight Rises. We've had brooding Superman in Man of Steel. So could we move beyond that and sort of back into more like comic territory, perhaps? It doesn't have to be frivolous. It just has to be sort of, yes, Okay, but now now we've decided. That's a good point. You know, we're not saying Batman, Superman, the party movie, right? Uh, but yeah. I think that you wanted. You know, I think there is a, especially with Superman. I feel there is a much lighter tone. Superman isn't. He's a very hopeful, optimistic character. And I think you're right. I think if they don't establish mm -hmm. the difference between Batman and Superman, putting them in the same movie isn't going to be as interesting. So my number two is that I would really like yeah. to see Ben Affleck become as respected mm -hmm. as an actor as he is a director. And if he's going to do it, this is the place. <laughs> right? I mean, how, what are your thoughts on Ben Affleck as Batman? Do you think he can, do, maybe, is there, do you have any hope that he can pull it off? I never thought he could come back from the slump he was in, so he might, he might very well surprise me again. I, I'm willing to give him a chance. That's it. I would have been much happier if they had announced him as a director. That would have made me ecstatic. But uh, I'm willing to give him a chance, and I'm just hoping I'm stop seeing Ben Affleck. Uh, with, uh, with the mask on. I think that's the biggest problem, not seeing Ben Affleck like in a Halloween costume. Yeah. But yeah. As, you, we both, as we both just said, he is surprised this is a director. Mm -hmm. And I thought that his uh, Oscar speech for Argo Best Picture was really, you know, humbling. And, mm -hmm. you know, he really seemed to, to be aware of how much, how much ground he'd covered. Uh, yeah. And so I hope that he approaches Batman with that same, you know, eagerness to prove and not just, you know, feel it's a sweet gig. No, but I don't think he does that. I think he truly, uh, truly cares about this character. So, fingers crossed. I hope so. So, what's your number three? My number three is that I want Lois to have a proper part in this movie. Because Lois Lane is such an iconic character in herself. She's not just the sort of girlfriend that we usually see in superhero movies. She has just as big an iconic status as Superman is. She has been with him from the start. And she is a professional woman. Uh, she has her job that also helps him. So I don't want to see her moved into... When it's going to be Superman and Batman, that's going to be huge. And I'm worried that she will be moved off into Natalie Portman territory. Well, the other thing that could happen is that... I don't know if you've ever seen the Batman-Superman animated movie from the series. No, I haven't. Oh, no. well, but what they did was they made Lois... Like, they made a love triangle between Lois... Oh, God, no. Yeah, right? I do <laughs> not want to see that happen here. No. You know, that's just not a good direction oh, to go in. <laughs> move away from that. <laughs> right? No, oh, I, horror. I, I was the one weak part of that crossover, which was very okay. good. But uh, that's interesting. Your number three plays into my, um, to my number three, which oh. is that I really would like to see you know, the Daily Planet come into its own. Uh, I kind of liked the Daily Planet elements that were in The Man of Steel, and I think they were the most successful I've seen yet in updating Daily Planet, the Daily Planet. It's had a very hard time transitioning to the digital age, just like actual print. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they try and make it a TV, sh a TV, uh, TV reporter sometimes in the comic book, which I don't think works. Yeah. Even though journalism is evolving, there are still major newspapers, and the Daily Planet could easily be one of them. So I want to see more Perry White, more Lois, and I also want to see more Clark Kent. I thought that at the yeah. end of Man of Steel, he looked very convincing as Clark Kent. Uh, yeah. But I was shocked that nobody recognized him but Lois. I was like, you were all standing right next <laughs> to him. <laughs> so what's your, what's your number four? Yeah. Well, my number four is that you know, it, it's a bit of a classic. You can see that the, 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 it might be building to a bromance between uh, Superman, using that horrible word, but between Superman and Batman, of course. Uh, it, it's what most people want to see. And I want to see that too at the end of the movie, maybe. But I want it to be earned. I really want to see a character-driven story, and I want that to go, not just because everyone feels like, oh, they're going to end up best friends and start the Justice League together. I want it to be earned not just because everyone knows they're going to end up there. And I would like to see something kind of like in Casablanca between 
Humphrey Bogart and Claude Rains sort of mo moving away in the, in the fog, so the beginning of a beautiful friendship. You want the verses. You want yes. Batman versus Superman. I agree. I think that that's yeah. really important. And that, you know, conflict is where great drama and story comes yeah. from. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that Batman has something to say about the way Clark handled yeah. himself in The Man of Steel. Yeah, I mean, probably. <laughs> He's like, I have such a long list of things I need to talk to you about. <laughs> so uh, my number four is I would actually like to see more DC Cinematic Universe world building. Uh, we were promised a lot of it in Man of Steel, and I thought there actually wasn't a lot of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love, you know, for instance, someone said, why couldn't there be a headline, Steve Trevor gone missing? Uh, you know, just little Easter eggs, more so than just, you know, I think everyone loves seeing the Wayne Enterprises logo uh, and also the Lex, you know, Lex Corp. Lex Corp, yeah. Right? But I think that I would, you know, I think they need to start hinting at this bigger world. I mean, they even yeah, did it in the X-Men movies when, you know, Mystique was going through that computer and you could see all the different project files. Exactly. And they can do that, unlike Marvel can do, because they have split up their, uh, their franchise so much. DC doesn't have that problem, they should use that to the fullest extent, of course, without going completely into fan service territory, but you know, like you said, world building is fantastic. And that's an excellent point, that's a very good point. Marvel is stuck and they have, you know, Marvel has awkward moments where, you know, everyone's like, how did Spider-Man not help save the <laughs> save New York City, you know, and you're like, because Sony wouldn't let him out to come out to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. so it's just, you know, you're totally, I think you've hit the nail on the head with that one. My number five is, I would rather see uh, someone other than Snyder uh, directing this movie because I think he's a very visually interesting director. I, I did love Watchmen. I loved 300. He can do amazing things when he, when he has a very good, uh, good script, but he doesn't do characters. He can't really, he puts up set pieces. And his idea of a character, in my mind, is very much someone being expansive and loud and, and almost an archetype of a person. And I think that if we want to go deeper into world building and into Superman and Clark Kent and, and uh, Batman and everything, we need someone that can really do dialogue and do that kind of character building. Maybe he'll surprise me, I don't know, but I haven't seen it just yet. I think you have a really good point there because Watchmen was chock full of characters, but yet if you've only seen the film, none of them will really resonate with you. That is just set piece after amazing set piece, granted, like you're saying. But And then also I think with Man of Steel, I thought the character that stood out the most to me was Feora, and she had the best visual moments, I felt. Yes. You know, it like, because I, I, think, I yeah. think Snyder was in love with being able to, you know, he's usually <laughs> slow motion, but I think he loved speeding up those fight scenes, and he yeah. did it so well. But I agree, yeah. and I also, I, you know, I've complained about it many a time, I, I, I'm very concerned about Goyer as well. I just don't feel this is the right creative team for the level of sophistication mm -hmm. that DC needs to have. And that's my number five. I'm very yeah. concerned that as they try and chase Marvel's box office success uh, mm -hmm. and fandom, that DC will lose what has made their films distinct. Yeah. You know, I was going to say darker, but I see what you're saying about maybe lightening, up, lightening it up a little and not everything has to just copy Nolan's films. But I don't think they mm. need to copy, you know, I think that, I think you're right, I think that if Ben Affleck had been directing, that would have been the perfect tone. Yeah, I think so. I, they, I mean, it has to be serious. I want it to be serious. I want it to be a real world. I don't want to be you know, pow, chop, things like that. I want it to be a real world, but also some kind of, you know, moving into, I mean, it's, it's fantastic the things that these uh, heroes can do. And, we, and when they do it right, and, I mean, the flight scenes in, in Man of Steel, it really, it, it, it brings to, uh, along the audience sort of to, to go with this person to do these amazing things. And that, when that works, then, then that's amazing. That really sort of grabs hold of you. That juxtaposition, because yeah. the reality makes the extraordinary seem even more extraordinary. You know, yeah. Listening to you, I think that maybe someone like maybe Paul Greengrass would be an interesting choice. Oh. Who did Born? He's so good at yeah. reality and action sequences. If he could maybe wrap his head yeah. around special effects, and he must have to some degree at this point, considering the films he's directed, mm. maybe someone like that would be a good choice. You know? Yeah.